Good morning, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. We are standing in front of my very messy shed with no doors, so don't look too closely inside. One of my long-term projects here is to redo the shed and turn it actually into a functional studio space. I just don't have the pennies for it yet. This shed was made when we first got the house and it is made all out of pallets and free stuff. So the pallets are mostly oak and the uh, resources to build all of this are repurposed with the exception of the plastic wave board roof. Okay, so on this shed, I grow one of my favorite roses. She kind of breaks my heart and that's because she struggles with a couple of big issues and today I wanted to talk about it. I am tempted when I ever get the money and the time to take out the shed and put in a studio to just take out the rose at the same time. But I keep giving her chances until then. Until then she is occupying a space in my garden that nothing else is going to um, compete with. She is gorgeous on certain, certain years and certain years she really struggles. So I just can't bring it, uh, bring myself to take her out. So in the interim, I'm just taking care of her as best I can. This is a rose that I got as a cutting and I don't know the name of it. It's a very old variety of rose and it's very, very fragrant. I have a lot of plants in my garden that I don't know the name of because I take my hand pruners and I take my pocket knife and I take my gloves with me everywhere. And if I can get a cutting of something and bring it home and root it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try it. If I see something I like and it's hanging over a fence somewhere or it's in a public park or in a bank parking lot, I will take a cutting and bring it home. So it does no harm to the plant that I'm taking it from and I can get a free plant myself. So this plant is incredibly fragrant, great big, uh, technically it's, it's a climber because it is a repeat bloomer and ramblers usually are once bloomers, but it is a very vigorous climber. Has these beautiful roses. But this rose gets powdery mildew pretty darn bad every year. Now, I recently made a video about how I make a treatment for powdery mildew. Yes, it is a treatment that I use on my roses. I use it on my akebia. This is also the same treatment I would use for summer squash and winter squash that have this problem. So you can use, uh, you can check out my video on how to make that recipe, but I will be applying it on my rose today because the sun is just over there and about to come beating down but uh, you can use this on any plant in your garden. So this rose, um, you can see here the powdery mildew on it. Really, really obvious when your plants have powdery mildew. It may be such that you wanna just leave it alone, but it can reach a certain point where it not only is aesthetically um, unpleasant to look at, but that it actually starts to harm the plant. It can cause uh, trouble with photosynthesis and it can cause dieback and on roses it can actually impact the buds and damage them and they don't open as well not so much on summer squash but on roses so I want to treat this uh, plant now you can see here there's some aphid problems yeah my roses always get aphids this time of year birds peck at them and then eventually the ladybugs will move in I kind of rub them off if I see them but I don't do too much to treat them because this this rose still blooms heavily and the aphids don't seem to have too much of an impact but that powdery mildew really does it can cause blossoms to drop and it can really damage the leaves themselves and impact photosynthesis so i want to pick a sunny day and i want to apply the powdery mildew milk spray to the leaves and let the sun bake it on when the bright sun shines down on the sprayed leaves, the milk, uh, the water in the milk evaporates readily and what is left is the fat and protein which forms a really good coating over the leaf and it smothers the mildew. Now look, you can see up here, even up here, I've got, look at this is all powdery mildew. So I'm going to spray everything. Now check out my video on how I have a lot more in my sprays than just milk. I'm gonna go ahead and feed this plant a foliar feed at the same time. 
But for now, let me talk you through the spraying part. coming in to spray the rose, I want to make sure that I thoroughly coat each of the leaves about like that. Again, this is a mix of milk and compost tea or worm castings or nettle tea or comfrey and other beneficial additives so that I am foliar feeding the rose at the same time that I'm treating the powdery mildew. I want to really coat those leaves and then I want the sun to come out and bake it. So you can reapply this spray anytime you need to throughout the season. It won't harm the plant, it will not harm your pollinators, and it will give it that extra amount of support that perhaps your plant needs because there are other deficiencies in your system. A good example, you can see this Golden Showers, which is a terrible name, yellow rose I bought because it's a very disease resistant yellow rose. It never, ever, ever gets powdery mildew, never. And it is growing right next to this rose. So this rose I think has some genetic susceptibility to powdery mildew. All right, thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you learned a little bit about growing roses and about treating your perennial and annual crops for powdery mildew. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. Check out my Patreon in the description below and I'll be back. Thanks.